Hey, what's up guys? It's Caleb here and in this video, I'm going to tell you guys a list of software that professional UI and UX designers use or web designer use on a day-to-day -day basis and I'm pretty much all of those and this is the list that I use pretty much like 100% of my day. So I think this is going to be helpful if you are a designer that getting into UI and UX and thinking about what kind of software to learn first or if you are going to a job interview i'm pretty sure that your employer is going to ask you about design softwares because they want to make sure that you know how to use those software that their team is also using so this video is going to tell you i mean i work with a bunch of different design teams and this is the list that most teams use so you will definitely be able to you know uh know how to answer that question when they ask you design softwares so this is the list and let's uh, jump right in. So I'm gonna categorize this whole list into different sections. So the first is definitely the design softwares, right? So for design software, the first one is definitely Figma. So Figma is a software that I use pretty much like 95% of my day. And it's my go-to design software right now. And if you don't know Figma, so Figma is pretty much a design tool that replaced Sketch. And if you are in a design industry long enough and know that everybody was using Photoshop back in like 10 years ago, and then people kind of changed from Photoshop to using Sketch. And Sketch was like seven years ago. And right now, I think like for the past a year or maybe like three years, people are moving to Figma right now. And why is Figma so good, right? Because Figma is a web-based design tool. So unlike Sketch or Photoshop that you need to download it to your local computer, Figma is definitely a web-based. So you can use Figma just right on the web browser. So that is crazy. And so meaning that, you know, you're never gonna lose your file. And meaning that everybody can be collaborating with you real time and also it doesn't cost any of your memory in your computer. So it's super lightweight, super quick, super good for collaboration. And you can see that Figma has pretty much all of those tools that you normally would use in a design software, right? So the rectangle, uh, creating a grid, creating everything. So Figma does that, you know, you can see how it works, like a grid system, designing your software. Um, and then for the collaboration part, right? So for example, you can see that I have two people in here. They're basically all myself. Um, so on another page of Figma, let me just quickly go over here. Then you can see that my mouse is moving along my screen, right? So that is how powerful Figma is. When I was working with um, Square and they have like 150 designers and maybe like 30 designers in the design team so you will see like 30 different mouses moving along the design and everybody is leaving command working working on the file at the same time so that is super powerful and that is most of my most of the design teams are using Figma right now like not Sketch so um, I think I think Figma is great so that is the software that I use uh, most of the day uh, most of my day and then the second one is um, Illustrator. Actually, I shouldn't put it as a second one because I don't really use Illustrator all that much. And but you, Illustrator is still a software that I use when I'm working with Vector. So if you know don't know what Vector is, Vector is basically uh, the shape online that you can scale and expand indefinitely, and that is what a vector means. And Vector is a lot still a lot better in Illustrator. So I use uh, Illustrator for local design. I don't really do a lot of local designs, um, but like for logo and icon and whatever that involved in a vector shape, I use Illustrator, Illustrator to create that because uh, you can create the same thing in Figma, but it's just not super good for those kind of thing. And still like Illustrator is really beautiful vector arts and all that stuff. So I still go back to Illustrator to do those things, but it's only maybe like 2% of my day. And then thirdly is a tool called Whimsical. I don't want to butcher the name, but like this is one tool that I use uh, for you know for user flow. So you can see in here, if you're working for a big product, then probably you're gonna have to come up with the product flow map for the entire thing. And of course, you know you can create this kind of thing on Figma as well, right? It's pretty easy to create. But like, why do I why do you use a second tool, right? Because, you know, I can just show you right now very quickly. I can just type like home page and then link it out to like a file page and whatever, right? You can just very, very quickly create your your flow mart or your flow chart super easily on Whimsical. And that's why I use Whimsical to all this kind of, you know, product tool thing. And also Whimsical is another 
is another web-based product that doesn't cost you anything and also is free to use. Oh, by the way, Figma is also free to use for individual designers as well. And I'm just using a few, uh, free plan and you know, I've been good so far. So Whimsical and Figma is all free. Um, so yeah, you can see that, you know, when I'm creating a user flow map, I just create it quickly here and then I can send this link over to my client and they can, they can jump on here, give feedback and all that on my Whimsical chart. So it's pretty easy to, you know, handle all of this flow chart thing. So I use Whimsical for that. And also lastly, another design software tools that I use a lot right now is called Icon Jar. I pretty much, I cannot live without Icon Jar right now. And what it does is Icon Jar help you to host all of your icon packs and icon into one place. But you may wonder like, hey, Caleb, there's a lot of, you know, software or website online right now, like Noun Project, they're, use, they're giving you a bunch of icon to select from. Let me just quickly go pull out like Noun, Pro, uh, Noun Project. And on you and now project. Let me just quickly go to now project and show you guys what it is, right? So now project is another one that you know has some icon in here, and you can type in, you know, uh, I don't know, man. You can type in a dog, and then they have a lot of icon for dogs and all that, right? All this kind of shape. But I would recommend designers just stay away from just random icons, and because like when you're using a lot of random icons, right? It's extremely hard to match icon to icon in your product. So imagine if one icon you're using on your project is like that, and then the icon is a shape like this, right? So your icon language is not gonna be consistent. And then you can see that this icon right here is not the same stroke as this icon. So you're gonna have to do a lot of customization for your icon. But for icon jar, right, if I import another icon pack, into my icon jar and you can see that you know the style and everything it's all matching right so if i use this on one project then i can make sure that you know my icon language is going to be consistent throughout the entire project and that is extremely important for professional uh, for professional design so i use all of my you know i use all of like I use icon jar to host all my favorite icon so if i use if i need an icon for book then you know these are all the book um, kind of uh, icon that I have, right? And I just pick from the same icon packs for books and all that stuff. So I use icon jar for that. And that is pretty much all the design software that I use. And there may be like some very small ones, but this is definitely the main software that I use for design. And secondly, uh, for, you know, for products back and like writing out design documents and all that kind of like document type of stuff, then I use this list and, you know, basically just Google Doc and Notion. Uh, so for Google Doc, you know, it's super great for just writing out documents. I believe that, you know, you don't have to be a designer to use Google Doc, definitely. But like for, you know, writing out design back and all that, it's just very, very content heavy task. And Google Doc is still, you know, just a word document right so you can share with your team and your team can come in here to comment on your on on your points and all that right so google doc is still you know the go-to for me to do because it's free um so yeah you can see you know when i'm writing out products back it is pretty simple like payment system what does it do within this payment system and you can just keep adding points and points and points into here like that and so i use google doc for that and aside from Google Doc, right, some of my clients would use a tool called Notion. So Notion is another very, very popular design tool. It's not really design tool, but just for like content management tool uh, that uh, designer use or like any other kind of people startup use. Uh, you can see this client, I don't really use it myself, but when I'm working with a client or working with some other teams, so you can see that some teams, they do use uh, this kind of stuff to kind of manage the contents, right? So like when I'm working with some other teams and I do use you know Notion to collaborate with them, mostly just collaboration with them. Um, so I think Notion, I don't know the plan, but Notion is not free if you're working with a bunch of people. So Notion is another one, and these are two main ones that I use for you know kind of like content management management like that and then getting into a uh, product uh, or project management so for project management there's a bunch of different tools and I use Trello myself and my client would be using you know Jira or like Asana but Jira and Asana mostly is from client work but they are a little bit different so we let's go over that uh, so for Trello, Trello is super extremely simple. It's basically a tool for you to 
kind of move your task along. And for project management, especially for freelancer like myself, right, it's very important to manage your project in some other way so you know what you're going to be working on, what is in your backlog, and all that stuff, right? So that is very important. So for freelancer, that is how I set up my, you know, Trello board. So you can see that, you know, a list, I have a list for people that I have to reach out and then the people that I talked to but didn't really get to our sales and that is all my law sale column, my past uh, clients, like everybody that I have worked with and I no longer work with, then this is all of my past clients and then the post back is you know, the people that I have contacted but haven't made a decision so I moved them to prospect so I know when to follow up with those people so this is the list to help me to manage all of these kind of sales stuff and then once we convert to a client the current client right now I put it in their client column so I know that you know these are the client that I'm dealing with right now and then for whatever task that I have to do for this client I'll put it to to tools I don't really have any tasks right now but you know I put it to to tools and then when I'm working on it I put it to working on it and then when I send it to review, I send it to review. If it's not good, I'm moving back to working on it and stuff like that, right? So this is all the list that how I manage all of my client project and like my project management stuff from myself. And then I also mentioned Jira as well. Um, I used Jira when I was working with my backend team and you know, Jira is connected to Big Bucket. So if you're a developer, you will know what that is, right? So it's very easy to manage your development team on Jira, and I used that too before. Some of my client use that too, uh, but you know that is mostly when I'm working with my client, I use Jira. And then there's another task called uh, another tool called Asana. Asana is another very popular management tool, but I don't really like it. But some of my client use it, so that's why I use it. So that is pretty much what for project management. And then lastly, lastly is the uh, the communication so you can see a full list of tools in here for communication and I think communication is very important to you like if you have a team a remote work team then if you're going to a job interview they will definitely ask you especially if that is a remote mode a role then they will ask you what like how do you communicate with your team when you're working remotely and these are the list of softwares that I use to communicate with my team working remotely and the first one is uh, a software called Slack, and I think if you know, you know, it, like Slack is definitely not new, right? They're definitely a public company. So I use Slack to mostly when I'm working with startup, and basically 99% of my client are all startups. And you can see how Slack works, right? So all of my teams here, uh, different client, then I can all manage all of them on Slack. And you know, like for my team Alfio, right? I manage my, you know, my developer on Slack. And then when I'm working with my client, I can talk to them on Slack as well. And these are basically all the teams that I have you know, currently worked with that are all managing all these different channels. So sometimes, you know, like if a client ping me on another channel, then I will see a notification. Then I'll just go on Slack and, you know, talk to them like that in there. So for, you know, quick communication, Slack is super, super great. And then also I use Teams as well, like Microsoft Teams, but I hate that software and I don't even have it up here, but I just hate it so much that I don't even want to recommend it to you guys. It just really suck. Um, and then like for, you know, video conference communication, I still use, you know, Google Hangout and Google Hangout is super great to basically, I will actually show you how this app works. So for like, you know, communication wise, right, I use um, Google Calendar to store all of my kind of events and like meetings that I have to go to that I have to go to and you can see that you know these are pretty much like all of my events that happen every single week and I have a lot of client meeting and all that stuff and so let's say there's a meeting coming up then I would um, I would use um, uh, Google Calendar to jump right into the Google Meet so you can see that when I click that right button there and then you will basically take me to this Google meeting uh, UI and I can you know, go to go to the meeting right away from here so that is pretty much how I manage all of my communication with the clients and all that kind of thing all on you know Google Calendar jumping to Google Hangout Zoom meeting and all that kind of thing and that is how I communicate with the team remotely and that's sum up you know all the softwares that I use as a web and UI and UX designers I know this is a pretty long video but I hope that you find some ideas some insight from that and if you like the content if you like the stuff that i talk about definitely give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and also follow me on all the social media links down below as well and i'll talk to you guys next time cheers